Thank you for joining us at Pacific Revival Center tonight for Bible study. I believe you're going to enjoy a great and awesome word. My name is Pastor Jason Swayzer, and tonight I'm going to be going over some scriptures with you concerning giving thanks to God or being thankful for the things that God has given you in your life. Right now, today, this time, this season, it is a season of thanksgiving. But right now, we're getting ready to enter a season of, if you want to say, giving. But it's still a time that we have an opportunity to thank God for the things that he continues to bring us through. So tonight, I'm going to be coming to you out of the book of 1 Chronicles 16, verse 17 through 36. A lot of scriptures, might not be able to get through them all, but just go ahead and grab your Bibles, get your pen, get your phones, and let's get ready to get into the Word. So I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version tonight, and starting at verse number 7, it reads, On that day, David first delivered this psalm into the hand of Asaph and his brothers to thank God, to thank God or to thank the Lord. So verse 8 says, O give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him psalms to him. Talk of all his wonderful works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Verse 12, remember his marvelous works, which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. I'm going to stop there for a second at verse number 12. You ever find it interesting in your walk of faith that when you're in the faith walk, one thing that's very interesting, we know the beginning, we can almost see the end, but sometimes we forget about the process. And the real question today, are we thanking God in the middle of the process? It's easy to thank God in the beginning when you first receive the word, when you first receive the, the command or the dictates that he is calling you to step out on. But then you can also see an expected end because God shows you the end from the beginning. And when he shows you the end from the beginning, it can be very exciting. It can be something that will give you joy and it just kind of, you know, gets you like, you know what, Lord, I am ready. Let's do this. Let's start. And when you step out in faith, day one, one, yeah, it's exciting. But then as the process goes along, sometimes you can begin to lose hope or sometimes you can begin to lose sight or sometimes you can begin to lose a little bit of the vision of when you first started out. Because, you know, in, in the beginning, things are new, things are fresh, you're excited. But then when you begin to go through the process and you begin to see the challenges that arises, you begin to see the tribulation that arises, you begin to see that, hey, you know what? This is a little bit longer than what I expected. But you know what? God always has an expected end. And again, what are you doing in the middle of the process? What are you doing from the time when God first gave you the word until when the, first, and when the word manifests? So I have something to share with you. So when God has called me to Hawaii a number of years ago, you know, it's exciting because the potential of the opportunities that might, that might be there. Just to give you a picture of a time frame, it was 2009, towards the end of 2009, when God had called me to come to Hawaii. And God began to show me dreams. At first, I didn't really understand it. I thought it was just something, a one day or one time chance, you know, that God was showing me these things. But no, God kept showing me things, not just through, three, uh, through dreams and visions, but also real time, real life examples, you know, he would give me like, this is the place that I'm showing you. This is the place that I am directing you. This is the place where I want you to go. But the time is not yet. But then God, he keeps showing me and he keeps showing me, he keeps directing me until finally I landed here in Hawaii. Well, I get here in Hawaii and yeah, it was exciting, Lord. I'm getting on the plane and I get here and I realized there was no red carpet. I realized there was no one there waiting for me at the airport. I realized there was no accommodations made for me. I realized that when I got here and I landed and I got off the plane, the only thing I had was the word and the command that God given me and the faith which I had built up through hearing the word, through receiving the word, and also through the songs, also through prayer, all that right there and all the preaching and teaching was all stored up inside of me, ready to be released. But then about a year or two goes by and I find myself like, Lord, 
there are some great things that you have shown me. Lord, there are some great things that you have spoken to me. But now I find myself like, Lord, am I behind time? And did I miss something? Because I don't feel, again, I said, I don't feel, meaning like in the flesh, I don't feel that I am where I should be. But then the reality is, I am right exactly where God wants me to be. So at that time in that season in my life, I had to make a decision. Do I start thinking about and worrying about Am I on God's timeline or am I going to start thanking God for the process? So I reached out for godly counsel and I called the pastor that I came from back home. And I called him and I said, you know, pastor, I, I just don't feel like I'm right where I am or where I should be. I feel like that I should be doing something more at this time. And he gave me one very good set of words that I still remember to this day. And those words, they still speak to me. He told me, you are exactly where God wants you to be. You're not behind time. You're not missing it right now. Just remember this. He said, enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. And I still hear his voice because there's something about the process that we tend to forget. It is the process that makes us into the very thing that God has called us to be. It is the process that is the one that is shaping us. It is forming us. It is almost cutting us away. Not the process alone, but it's the process that God has set up and designed for us to go through. You know, a lot of times people, they don't want to start, you know, cooking. Because, you know, when it comes to cooking, preparing food, when people realize that how much work is about to go into it, the next thing you know, you find them at Safeway or Foodland and they're in the frozen food aisle looking for a TV dinner because they don't want to go through the process because they realize how long it's going to take to prepare that specific meal. Well, for those of us who love food, it is not a process for us. And we enjoy what we are about to do because all of that makes that excellent dish. It is the same thing with God. Everything that God has set up for us, everything that God has prepared for us, it is set up for a specific time, for a specific season, and for a specific purpose, but it is all for him in the end. And the good thing about it, within that process, we, we, we find out the reason why we had to go there and why we had to sit and marinate for a reason. We, we find out why, so you know, sometimes during the process, the heat is a little bit high because you got to get that searing point on there, and that right there is what what's going to seal in all the juices. So sometimes in your life, you know, the process gets a little hot. Yeah, you want to move because it's hot, but there is a reason why, because there are some things that need to be sealed in you. And also, you know, there are some things that are lost. You're going to lose a little bit of juice, but that searing process seals in the majority of the juices. And then once you leave off of there, you're going to let there and you're going to sit and you're going to rest. And when you rest, all those juices right there, we say the juices come back in, but right there, that is the process right there. The juice, it comes back in and it sits. And when you cut into that steak, the steak is perfect. It is right. It is just. And it's the same thing. If you allow God to sit there and season you and to marinate you and to put you through the process, the, the cooking process. Yes, again, I say it gets hot, but you let them to cook you just right. And then when you get through that, there is a season of rest. And then right after the season of rest, you get the taste of what is good. The scripture says that taste and see that the Lord is good. I said all that to say that, hey, we have to thank God in the middle of the process. The process may not be fun. We may not enjoy the process. It may not be where we want to be, but that is the very thing that when you get to be where God has called you to be at that expected end, you're gonna have the great tools, the great assets that you need to accomplish what God has done for you because you stayed in the middle of the process. Now back into the word right here. Excuse me, my page has turned a little bit. Verse number eight again, it says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. It says to call upon his name. When is the last time that you called upon the name of the Lord? You know, we know the scriptures. We see it in the Bible. We see how they called upon the name of the Lord, but yet he hears their cry. But in the midst of our trouble, we have trouble calling upon the name of the Lord. Sometimes we forget to call upon the name of the Lord and we're so easy to call our mom, our friends. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with godly counsel, but 
But sometimes we're quick to pick up the phone because it's easy to hear someone else's voice on the other end of the line. Or today we got text message, email, we're doing everything else, instant messages. We're doing all that right there, but we are not calling upon the name of the Lord. But here it says, call upon his name. It says, make known his deeds among the, t- uh, among the people. When you make known the deeds among the peoples, that means right there, that's something that you are not keeping to yourself. That's something right there that you're willing to share. That's something right there that you just can't keep inside. Because when you think about this and you call upon his name and you make known his deeds among the peoples, that means that you're getting ready to testify. Did you not know that when you are going through the things that you are going to do, did you not know that when you're calling upon the name of the Lord and he answers you and he gives you those things that you have been asking for, for which you have called him, those things are not just for you to sit on. Those things are for you to testify upon. And when you testify of the goodness of God and when you testify of what God has done for you and when you testify all the things that he has brought you through, don't you know that will cause people to give thanks to God because you don't know the things that people are going through. You don't understand the challenges that they face. You don't don't know that they may be going through the very thing that you are going through and they needed to hear the word what you were saying and that right there would cause them to go home or even on their way home, or when they get in the prayer closet, or before they go to sleep, but they're going to give thanks to God, because if God did it for you, they're saying, I know that God would also do it for me, because we no one understand that the Lord, he is not a respecter of persons, that's why I love looking through the scriptures, and that is what kept me, before I came to Hawaii, I had to look at Abraham, I looked at Abraham, and I looked at Abraham, I watched Abraham in the Old Testament, and I watched some of the things that he did. And I'm like, okay, okay. I, I, I understand why he's trying to do this because, you know, Sometimes you feel like, okay, maybe I need to move a little bit. Maybe I need to position myself, you know, just right. You know, maybe I need to just get right here where God can see me. But you know, when God has told you something, just like he told Abraham that you and Sarah are going to have a son and it's going to come from you, you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to go and grab a Hagar, you know, but sometimes, you know, you feel like I got to grab a little something else. I got to add a little something else to this. But no, you do not have to add a little something else to the word of God. The only thing I know and understand that you add to the word of God is your faith, is your faith. You add the faith to the word of God, the faith and word of God working together hand in hand. So like that, so when I just said, I was looking at Abraham and I was watching what he was doing. I was watching what him and Sarah were doing. Yes, they were trying to figure it out and they were trying to see, okay, let me get in here. But when you listen to what God is saying and you follow his commands and you wait for the Lord, and again, you wait for the Lord because he is very, very specific because at that right time and at that right season, he is the one that is going to position you. So stop trying to position yourself, you know, into the position and position, uh, allow God to position you. And you will find yourself with a lot of testimonies. You will find yourself giving thanks to God for what you did not have to go through, but you will also give thanks to God for what he has brought you through. And you will start giving thanks to God, like, God, I thank you that I did not move. I thank Thank you, God, that I did not go ahead of when I should have went ahead. But I thank you, God, that I listened to your voice and I thank you for your voice. And you find yourself starting to thank God for every little thing. You start to thank him for waking you up in the morning and for keeping you in your right mind. Don't you know there's a lot of people who wake up in the morning and they're not in their right mind. There's a lot of people that wake up and they have no peace. There's a lot of people that wake up, they have no joy. There are some small things that we need to remember to thank God for. There's a lot of things that sometimes we overlook and say, you know what? This is a given. No, I'm sorry, it is not a given because God, he did not have to do it, but he did it anyway. But you still thank God for the things that he continues to give you freely. He continues to freely give you life. He continues to freely give you breath in your lungs. He continues to freely to give you shelter and food and clothing, all these things that we have taken for granted. When is the last time that you thank God? Did you get up this morning to thank God when you're on the way? Did you thank God? Yeah, you may have thanked God when you first got your new car. You may have thanked God when you first got your new house. But do you remember that day? Do you call to remembrance his wondrous works? Just like it said here in the scriptures, it says here, sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wonderful works, talk of all his wonderful works. And I must say, you know, I am guilty myself because 
It says the talk of all his wondrous works. See, I may sit and choose like, Lord, that was a great testimony. Lord, that was an awesome thing that you have done for me. But see, I have found that I have picked and choose like, Lord, nobody wants to hear that story. Lord, nobody wants to hear that testimony because I have looked at some of the things and I have considered them small. I have even considered some of the testimonies like, hey, you know what? I, I, I think there was enough of that one, you know. But what about this one, Lord? This one right here was greater than that. But I found myself searching in my heart, trying to pick and choose which one was better. But see, I'm at fault because I've learned that all his works are wonderful. I've learned that all his testimonies are awesome. That these testimonies that he gives me, these testimonies that he gives you, they are special and they are unique and they come from him. They are his testimonies that he entrusted with you. Think about God being so awesome. <laughs> if God wanted to, he could do it himself. See, when you look in the scriptures, it says that the scriptures, they were preached to Abraham. That is one message that I would love to hear. Abraham was preached <laughs> this message, such a good message that he believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. But today we still speak of his works, the testimonies that Abraham has. It still speaks to our lives today. It is still useful for us today. So I have looked in my heart and I say, Lord, I'm sorry. I am because sometimes I have discounted what you have done as something small or something that may not be as great, or maybe this person may not like that, but Lord, I, I don't know how great of a testimony and how that was just one thing that they needed to believe and one thing that they may have needed to change and one thing that they may have needed to step forth and to step out, the testimony. God will hold us accountable, I believe, for what he has entrusted us with. It's like the talents. To one he gave five, to one he gave two, to one he gave one. But when the master came back, yes, he took into account everything that he had gave and he wanted to know, what did you do with what I have given you? So today I ask you, what have you done with the testimonies that God has given you? Have you done what he says in his word right here? It says, sing to him, sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wonderful works. Have you been talking about his wonderful works? His wonderful works are those testimonies. You need to tell anyone and everyone that will listen, that will hear, because it is the goodness of God that draws people to repentance. I'm not talking about the testimonies when you got stuff, but talk about the testimonies from what God brought you out of, because there are some people still in some dark places, the same places that you came out of. They exist. They didn't shut down because you moved out. They just, you know, took on someone else. You moved out. Someone else just moved right over. But we just can't allow those people to stay there. We have to go back. We have to testify. We got to speak of his wonderful work. Works. But I love here again, it says, sing to him. Sing songs to him. You ever been in your car and you're just talking to the Lord and uh, all of a sudden the words that just come out and, you know, <laughs> words from your heart and words from your, your spirit, you know, things that, because you, you're thinking about the things that he has done. The songs may only be a few words and you may only have a few words, but when you sing those words over and over again and they're coming out from your heart and they're just not coming out from your lips or from your head, but they're coming out and they're testifying of God and his goodness, but you're testifying, but you're speaking it back to him. You're testifying, but you're singing it back to him. And when you're singing those songs, I think and I believe that you are glorifying him and that you are honoring him and that you are ministering unto him. Verse 10, it says, glory in his name. It says, glory in his name. His name is so great. His name is so awesome. His name is so powerful. 
You know, we need to move out of the way of the name of God. We need to move out of the, the way of Jesus, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is just used too common right now. But there's nothing like the name of Jesus. We don't understand the power that is in the name of Jesus. We don't understand the peace that is in the name of Jesus. We don't understand the glory that has been given in the name of Jesus. We don't understand that it is in him that we have this eternal life that God so desired to give us. But yet, we say, thank you, Jesus, as a byword. We say, thank you, Jesus, just because. But can you imagine if you say, thank you, Jesus, and you know him, and he knows you, he must respond. He is not going to pass you by. He will not pass you by if you truly love him, if you truly know his voice, if you know the name of Jesus and you treasure the love, you will glory in his name. There's nothing like to glory in the presence of God and in the presence of Jesus or the Holy Spirit. But he says the glory in his name. He has given us his name. But he has given the name of Jesus the name above all names. It is a name that every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. How can we not be thankful to a God who has given us such a great name in the name of Jesus the power and authority that is in the name of Jesus, the life that is in the name of Jesus. We need to learn and we need to rethink how we are using the name of Jesus. We have to know how to glory in his name. And I thank God for his Holy Spirit because the scripture speaks that it is his anointing that teaches us all things. If you don't know how to glory in the name of Jesus, if you don't know how to glory in the presence of God, if you do not know how to bask in his presence, again, I challenge you to seek him, to seek his face, talk to him. Again, it is the anointing that teaches us all things. He can teach you and to show you how to glory in his name. And it says, let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Think about this. We are to rejoice. Rejoice. Who seek the Lord. I know our days are challenging. We are faced with things so challenging each and every day. It's like one day you're up, the next day you're down. Sometimes it's the same day. You know, as a manager, you get so many challenges that come at you. You know, so many things, you know. And then one minute you want to think and your first thought comes from the flesh. But then you still hear the voice of the Lord Say, no, not that way. This is not how you're going to do it. This is not how you're going to respond. What is your response in the midst of those circumstances? What is your response in the middle of the challenges? Is that when you're going to say, thank you, Jesus? But when you say, thank you, Jesus, in the midst of all that, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of every challenge, in the midst of that weight coming down on you. That's when you receive peace. That's when the joy comes in. Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. I'm reminded of a number of years ago where maybe 2010, and I, I, I really didn't know what else to do, Lord. And, and it's in those times when you really don't know what else to do. 
and you begin to seek the face of the Lord, that it's the first time I, I, I heard the Lord sing. But he would tell me the, the words was, everything will be okay. Everything will be all right. Because the Father is on time. And he would sing that again and again. And it would give me so much peace. I remember it in my heart right now. Back into the scriptures. It says to seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. You have to understand just the basic structure of grammar here in English. It says to seek the Lord in his strength. You see, a lot of times when we read the scriptures, we're just reading them. But you have to understand that this is a conjunction. In order for this to work, in order for this to work, listen, it says to seek the Lord and his strength. Why would you just seek the Lord just to seek the Lord? Yes, I do understand sometimes when we seek the Lord, we don't want nothing else. All we want is his presence. Yes, that's true. That is one way to seek him. When you go into your closet, when you go into your quiet time, when you go into your truck or your vehicle, or wherever it is that you meet the Lord, yes, you can just seek him and just, just tell him, Lord, I don't want anything. I just want to be in your presence. And he shows up. It's like his presence just falls on you. And it covers you. You can't even speak. Because of the fullness of his presence. Sometimes you can barely move because you're in the awesomeness, his presence of God. He is greater than you. Your spirit man automatically submits. You automatically yield from your belly and you cannot move. But all you can do is bask in his presence. You want to say thank you, Lord. But the words are, are, are not enough because the awesomeness of God, I, you, it's like you cannot put words to how great he has been or how wonderful is he, he has been. But when he is mindful to come to you, or should I say, when he is mindful to let us experience his presence, when I go to him, Words cannot explain that. But here, I'm talking about, it says, seek the Lord and his strength. You seek him and his strength. You know, we are not designed to carry the weight that the world has put on our shoulders that the weight of the expectations of what they have spoken, of what may they have said, what is the standard here in order for you to make it here in this world. And sometimes when you start to feel the weight of the world coming down on you and the pressures of life and you don't know what else to do and you feel helpless, but right here, right now, you should know and learn how to seek the Lord and his strength. It is only his strength. It is only his ability. It is only his, his might. There is a scripture that says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He has given us his Holy Spirit. Use him. Hear his voice. When you hear his voice, you receive strength where you didn't know that you have strength. You receive boldness when you didn't know that you had boldness. But no, it is not your boldness. It is not your strength. It is not your ability. But it is him. 
It is his strength because you have sought him. But when you seek the Lord, you seek him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And that's all that you can do. But when you have done all that you can, and when you have gone as far as you can, and when you cannot go no more, that is when you have given it all. And then that's when he says, I will take it from here. I will give you the strength where you don't have strength anymore. I will give you that ability where you didn't have that ability ability no more. But just remember, this is my anointing. Remember, this is my peace. Remember, this is what I'm pouring out to you. Remember, this is coming from you, me. And all God is saying is to say, thank you. All God is saying is say, son, just give it to me. Daughter, just give it to me. See, we have to understand that we cannot carry We cannot carry. We cannot. You know, I think about being in the army and a basic training. And (laughs) we had a we had a soldier. Her name was Littlefoot. I think she she was probably maybe four eleven. Rucksack and full gear was about you know her size or almost all her size. And I, I just remember being on the road marches and you know her just you know. You're just barely being able to make it. And, and I remember the drill sergeants being all over her and pushing her and, you know. But, you know, I kind of see God like that drill sergeant. Because when we go to God, we go to him in our ability, just like we went to the army in our ability and our strength. Yes, they saw where we were. But see, in the midst of all that, their job is to draw out of us or to bring out of us what we did not know what was in us and cause us to do things that we did not know that what we could do and give us that ability that we did not know. I used to be afraid of heights and I mean afraid of heights, but you know what? You got to learn how to repel, right? When you got to repel down that wall, you got to learn to go over those cargo nets. You know, I had to get over that fear. I had to move forward and see God is doing the same thing. He is putting us in those situations, but he's kind of like that drill sergeant. You know, we fall down and the Lord is saying, get back up. But Lord, how can I get back up? You get back up and you got to get back up. I have given you my word. I have given you my son. I have given you my spirit. I have given you my name. I am giving you my strength. When you seek me, I will give you my strength. It says, seek the Lord and his strength. And he will do that. Now, right now, I know that I can't continue in all these scriptures, but I do invite you to partake with Bible study again next week. But when you partake, just remember the things and the words that were spoken today. Because take the time, search the scriptures, begin to search your heart and begin to remember to be thankful unto God. But just remember, and I'll leave you with the scripture again. It says, verse 10 at a, um, First Chronicles 16, it says, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord, who seek the Lord. Remember, you must seek the Lord. And again, verse 11, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Now tonight, once again, as I close out Bible study, I just want you to remember that we need to have a heart of thanksgiving. As I said here in verse number eight, it says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. I want to leave that scripture with you tonight. Again, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. And tonight, as I pray, I'm going to mention that scripture. But I want you to think about your families and and your friends. Think about the things and the times, the seasons that you have taken for granted. Things that God has freely given to us. Where have we missed thanking him? Because if we really think about it, we should be thanking him every minute, every second. I know we have to breathe, but just the very breath that he has given us is a reason to give thanks to him. So as I pray, just consider and remember the things that he has given us. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God, this day. For Lord, you had said, Father, to call upon your name. Father, in Jesus' name, it also says, Father, to make known your deeds, Father, among the peoples. Cause us to remember those words, Lord God. Cause us not to be silent anymore 
for the things that you have done, Father. Let us make your name known, Father, among the nations. And I say nations because, Lord, that frees us to speak to anyone, any person at any time, no matter where we are, Father. I pray, Lord God, to give us a spirit of boldness, Lord God. That we may speak thanksgiving and praise, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. That your name may be glorified. That others may desire to serve you and to praise you and to worship you, Father. But Lord, let the words impart grace to the hearer, Father. Not words of condemnation as we speak. But let the words that come from out of us, let it flow, Lord God. Let it flow out of our belly. Let it flow out of our spirits in Jesus' name. That it may impart that grace to the hearer. That they may in turn, Father, in turn, give thanksgiving unto you, Father, for what you have done, Father. The very life and breath that you have given us, Father. Father, you have brought us through a very time and a very season, Father. One that we thought this generation and some of the generations thought that we would never see or think that we would ever have to go through. But Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for thank you right now, Lord, for bringing us through, Father, the seasons and the trials that we are going through right now with COVID. But Lord God, I know that you are an intentional God and you are a purposeful God. And Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for the manifestation that is to come, Father, for we will understand and we will know and we will look back and we're going to say thank you, Lord, for what you have brought us through, Father, for keeping us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. But now, Lord God, I thank you for washing us with your word today. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us to have a heart of thanksgiving, Lord God. Because, Lord God, it's in that thanksgiving, Father, that we're able to have that joy, Father, that love, Father, that presence, Father, that you want us to know cause us to enter into your gate with thanksgiving and into your gates with praise, Father. Let praise not leave our lips. And, Father, I ask you, Lord, that not let worship leave our hearts. I ask that in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mahalo for tuning in with Pacific Revival Center. If this message touched your spirit, make sure to subscribe and follow us on all our social media accounts to connect with our online family. If you're already a follower, share our content with your family and friends. And if you'd like to support the ministry, click Give Now below. Our mission is to train, equip, and send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. And together, we can send the love of Christ to all corners of the world. We'll see you next week here at PRC, the place to be.